Thank you for being back. Um, I, I want to add a few comments concerning import with Web ODV, uh, and especially highlight what is not yet possible, but things that we intend to add. One, one thing is that we want to do is when, when people make a selection of uh, C data net files using this Maris selection tool that Peter will describe, I think on the last day, that as a result, the list of files that match your query, your selection, can be used for a data import. This is something that does not work yet, but that is what we intend to, to add. Uh, the other thing, um, some people have asked me about private data um, right now. If the files satisfy these ODV spreadsheet rules, if the files are generic ODV spreadsheet, this will work, actually. But if, if there are problems with the format of the file and it doesn't satisfy um, these requirements, then these imports will fail silently. So this is something that we realize also needs some uh, attention and improvement. So see what we have right now as the beginning. We already can import C data net and uh, a whole range of other data sources uh, into uh, collections. Uh, some people also have asked me, what about adding Argo data into C data net collections, basically to accumulate into a single collection. This is also something it does not work right now, but we are aware of this requirement and it will work at some point. So this is work in, very much work in progress, but uh, Hopefully, you have realized these are useful uh, beginnings already. Okay, so with these comments, uh, we, we are entering uh, session two of the Web ODV course. And the, the emphasis now will be um, quality control. So see the data workflow uh, as several steps. First of all, import. We covered that. Next one is to look at the data and to validate the data doing quality control. And uh, again, this will be hands-on. So I'm, I'm kind of hoping that you are following what I'm doing. So, so, and, and the same rules. Um, if you are stuck, please raise your hand. If you are well on track, then just keep on working. If I don't see any hands, I'm assuming everything's going well. <clears throat> so in this sequence of four um, services, we now want to enter um, the Web ODV Quality Control Service. So everyone, please click on this uh, icon. And just like with many of the uh, services that you have seen, the first step, it takes you to the private workspace. But what you are now seeing is a filtered version. Some of the directories are not shown. And the filter is you are only seeing uh, entries that have to do with ODV collections that contain .odv files. Because the quality control will now be done on ODV collections. So we know, <clears throat> so in principle, we could use um, collections from the imports uh, that you have done before the coffee break. And the, the hands-on that you will do, the exercises that you will do uh, on your own, you can use these collections. But for the plenary uh, teaching, we are using a collection that I have prepared as part of the um, the ODV course material. So everybody please open the ODV course material folder. <clears throat> there is a, a QC subdirectory. Please open this one. 
And then you should see uh, a file dirty underscore dataset dot ODV. Anybody not seeing it? So this, this collection has been prepared specifically to contain uh, lots of bad data so that we have something to, to identify and then to quality flag, right? Please check this ODV file here. And then click on continue button on the right uh, lower corner of the window. So now uh, the service will be started on this collection. And ultimately we want to see a screen like this. And maybe we have to wait a little bit. Can I see show of hands who is already seeing this screen? Okay, the, the compliment who is not seeing it. Still loading? Nothing? Maybe Ifremer has to put on, on the, the high privileges now. Put on low privilege. Still not working? Uh. So while, while you're still working and, and if it's not coming up in, let's say, 30 seconds, then maybe you try again. Um, let me give you some uh, general comments on, on this. Now, the QC, and then later on when we do visualization and data analysis, now, this service uses an interface that tries to mimic ODV desktop. And those of you who know ODV as a desktop um, application, should already um, identify working. Okay, so in the, in the web browser, <clears throat> don't be fooled, we are not running ODV locally here, it's the web browser showing it, but it, it has the same elements that a standalone desktop ODV would have. The main so-called canvas on which the images are drawn, that's this main part, then, um, we have here on the right hand side a sequence of three lists. The top one containing metadata of the current station, the middle one containing actually sample values, and the lower one uh, we ignore for now. Uh, these ISO surface variables are not so important today here. But the general message is um, in the web browser, we are providing an interface that behaves like the desktop ODV. And what I mean with behaving is it's interactive in a similar way. So the first thing is it knows where the mouse is. So if you move the mouse and you look in the status bar here in the lower part, in this middle field, you can realize uh, I'm now, it's telling me I'm on the canvas, the white area, now I'm in the map. Notice also if you have a, a white browser window that here, like in my case, here on, on this side you have like a grayish, light grayish area. This is an inactive area. Let me just complete this part. I, I don't understand. So let me describe while they are repairing whatever. Um, there is this light gray area that's actually inactive area. And, and down here, uh, you would see uh, nothing. In, in this area, when the browser window is very narrow, like this, then in the lower part, you will have an area that is uh, inactive. Um, so the mouse, uh, this interface knows where it is and the interactivity of ODV also includes left clicking to select something like a station in the map. So everybody please 
start left clicking on stations here, notice that this red mark follows. And this red mark that indicates the so-called current station that ODV currently focuses on. Here in the upper list, you will see the metadata of this current station. In the middle one, you will see the data of one of the samples from this station. So in this case, it would be the data from sample one out of 31 samples total that we have for this station. Just experiment and, and click on, on various uh, spots. Uh, notice the responsiveness and also notice uh, how all these information is updated. So the browser interface um, has this capability uh, of being aware of these positions and can select stations like this. Later, once we have data windows here, then also you can click into the data windows on the samples and they will be selected similarly to selecting stations here. So left clicking, that is selecting something. Uh, those of you who know ODV, I'm preaching to the knowledgeable already. It's, it's the same principle, right? Uh, no learning necessary. Um, the second piece of interactivity in ODV are mouse right clicks to get uh, context menus. And uh, so put the mouse over the map, right click, and, and notice that menus come up. And when you look closely, these are exactly the same menus that would appear in the desktop uh, ODV. And the uh, functionality behind all these entries is exactly like it was desktop ODV. So I'm not going through all these um, options that we have, only some here. Um, from those of you who know desktop ODV, you realize you get different um, uh, context menus depending on where you right clicked. That's the same here. So put the mouse over the desktop, over the, uh, over the canvas, the white area outside of map and data windows like here. And below, if you are unsure, just watch in the status bar that it's showing canvas. <clears throat> Right-click and you get a different menu. And the principle is what you right-clicked on, this is what will be operated on by these options here. Right. Um, what else? And later we will, uh, we will also use uh, left and right-clicking also in these list windows. So, Put your mouse over the temperature value here, right click, and you will get options that will allow you to manipulate these values or the quality flags. And this is what we will use uh, for quality control a lot. And especially what we will use is this part, assign quality flag, and we will go through uh, the different options that you will have. Those of you who, who, who have used uh, desktop ODV, sounds familiar? It's identical, right? Um, so those of you who are good in, in making quality control using desktop ODV can have an easy time, right? Nothing new to learn. Those of you who have never seen ODV running well, pay attention closely. Um, so what we want to do is now dive into quality control. And what Web ODV is capable of right now is doing visual quality control. So we will set up data windows showing uh, the data and we will identify curious or, or questionable or dubious uh, data values and learn how to flag them. And finally, at the end, we will learn how to filter 
in a data window so that we only see uh, the good data, for instance, and, and the other ones being uh, filtered out. I mean, this is the, the objective why we do the quality control and flagging in the first place. Okay, so <clears throat> everyone, please put um, the mouse over the canvas, white area, outside any data window, right click. And we will set up um, a layout that will allow us to do quality control in two ways. One way will be to choose this option, load view. So everybody, please click this one here. And everybody should see uh, a dialog looking exactly like this. Uh, anybody not seeing it? These are the list of views that, that I have prepared for this dirty data set here. And I have included two views that are suitable for making quality control. And these are the so-called, in ODV language, these scatter windows that show all the data of all the stations in this map. This is usually the, the good windows to do quality control because you see all the values. If you have outliers, you see them. So depending on whether we just want to quality control just a few uh, variables like TNS, then you might choose just two scatter windows, but they will be quite large or whether you intend to do quality control on lots of variables, then you could choose this uh, six scatter window view, but, but then be prepared that many of these windows are smaller, just to fit on the screen. Um, I'm, I'm choosing six scatter um, view, QC. And you make your choice. <clears throat> Okay, so now this takes a while because the, um, the dirty data set has ten, more than 10,000 stations and it's preparing windows um, including all the data of all these 10,000 stations. So in principle, I shouldn't have done it with a, a group of 40 people here. Um, this is a classical load feature now because uh, it's asking a lot for any instance. So I'm asking a lot, reading all these 10,000 stations and, and preparing the plot possibly containing 500,000 points and times 30 or 40 if, if everybody does it. So I'm assuming everybody is waiting. This is unfair. <laughs> so those of you who just requested two windows, are there people? You have an advantage because only two windows need to be prepared. Everybody has it. So who in the room does does not see these uh, data windows. Oh, at least I'm not alone. <laughs> so in, in this case, I don't know what happened. Um, so for the training course here and realizing that this is still highly experimental, Sebastian Miroch has built in some uh, kill mechanism. So. Those of you who are fine and, and you see the data windows, please don't do it. But, but just the three of us. So return to the home page of the VRE, uh, go to Stop Web ODV, click on it. Everybody should see this red bar, click on it. And let's try again. So I, I have to reestablish. And when I'm redoing now 
getting uh, these data windows, I'm going to show to you how to zoom just to make sure we are looking at a smaller set of data so that the uh, workload is not that hard. And um, those of you who already have the, the data windows, you can do the same thing. Your map just will be a little smaller. Let's learn how to zoom into the map. So all of you put the mouse over the map, right click, choose zoom. Just like in the regular ODV, um, um, a zoom rectangle uh, comes up and these edges, they are active. So you can put the mouse over it, press the left mouse button and keep it pressed and, and move the mouse, like in this case. You, you can go to uh, certain edges, press the mouse and just move the edges individually, like here. You can put the mouse in the middle, uh, press the left mouse button and hold it down and move the entire rectangle. So all this follows classical ODV uh, behavior, right? Once you have found your um, favorite region, and I'm now doing a small region, like for instance in this area here, down in the status bar, you have these uh, apply and uh, cancel buttons. So apply, if you like this rectangle, if you want to abort the zoom, just click cancel. So this worked. <clears throat> um, now, in, in my case, um, the dots are barely shown, too small. Um, those of you who know desktop ODV, how would you change it? Okay, so we do right click on the map. We choose properties, just like in the desktop ODV. And then, just like in the desktop ODV, you have these multi-page uh, dialogues. And those of you who know about um, desktop ODV know you go to display style and you just increase uh, the size of the dots. And I'm just making them larger. This is the first time dialogues come up. Many more will come. Always in the lower left corner, you have this apply button. You press the apply button to apply what you have selected. And now I can see the points. <clears throat> Let me just do this properties again. I right click on the map, properties. If you do something and, and actually you don't like what you did, Click on any point outside the dialog and it will go away. Or click on this X here. So there are plenty of ways to, to abort. The only way to, um, to apply values is to click the apply button of the dialog. Okay. Uh, do we have questions so far? No. <clears throat> So now with just um, in the status bar down here, just like in the desktop ODV, you see how many stations you are looking at. So in my case, I'm, I'm now looking at 116 out of this total of 10,000 something, just like in the normal ODV. So if, if I now want to establish this six scatter window, I go uh, to the canvas, right click, um, ah, okay. So the first way would be load view, and, and I choose the one that I've prepared. And now it's coming up quickly. And those of you who were successful in the first case should see something similar, but with even more data in these data windows. Remember, in ODV language, a scatter window like, like this one here shows all the data of all the stations down here. Ah, and loading this view that actually uh, had the full coverage of the data set. So I, I was surprised about uh, getting it.
So the view was an entire thing. But now not having 30 other people doing the same thing, I, I was successful pretty quickly. <clears throat> okay, so um, what else do we want to show? Uh, maybe one other way of zooming, and that again is, is also in, in the desktop ODV version. Sometimes you don't want to right click, zoom, and then manipulate these four corners and so on. There's a quick one, press and hold down the control key. So let, let me zoom into these, um, oh no, here in the temperature window, these look very curious. Right? So I want to zoom into this sub area here. So put the mouse in, inside this window close to where one of the edges should be, like here. Hold down the control key, left click, hold down the left mouse button and move the mouse like this. Now when you release, then uh, it zooms into this area. So did, did that work for you? Sometimes this is the, the quickest way of, of zooming into a domain, right? Control, left, click and hold and then move the mouse and release. So the, the opposite, if you want to go back to full range, which later we always want to do, so it's important to learn. You right click on this window and choose this option, full range. Okay, and I do it here, so I'm back. Let's also realize that there is an undo so for instance, now I did full range and I said, oh damn, I, I, I wanted to, to look at the zoomed uh, region. There's undo. That operates on the entire canvas. So the mouse has to be over the white area canvas, right click, and there's undo here. And this will, in my case, will bring me back to the zoomed uh, version. Still with me? Um, <clears throat> so I think now it's time to do uh, flagging, right? And uh, let me, let me before we actually make any changes, let me say a few words of warning. So doing quality control actually sh uh, should only be done by people who understand the region of the ocean and know what is real and, and unreal. So we need to have some oceanographic expertise. If, if you are a pure IT person and you have no idea how temperature in the Mediterranean should behave, don't do it. So we want to have, uh, well, experts do it. But I would imagine everybody would realize uh, temperatures, and, and actually if you are wondering, hey, these temperatures of 38.58 degrees, um, even IT people might realize, mm, this never happens in the Mediterranean, especially if it's in, a, in 100 meters or here, if I click on, on this point here, then we realize in 400 meters, the data tell us it's 38.4. Not even the Mediterranean is that warm. I mean, we all understand outside it's colder, but the Mediterranean is not so warm. Just a question to the experts in the room. Any idea what happened here? So if you look at these values, they are all like in the 38 range. Bing, 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 bing. That looks very much like salinities in the Mediterranean. And, and actually then, if you look at the salinity value here, you find 13 point something, which is totally unreal. We realized actually what happened here, what was causing the bad data. So people just um, messed up 
these two columns. And in principle, in these kind of cases, if you were the originator of the data, you would be able to correct it, right? But we, as data users, all that we can do is now flag the data as being unusable, as bad, right? Because temperatures of 38, nobody believes. If, if they would go into DIVA, they would mess up the DIVA field completely, right? Okay, so <clears throat> now how, do we are, how are we flagging um, an individual sample like this one? You, you can click on on your favorite outlier. If we want to flag this one, in my case it's this sample here, then, and we want to flag the temperature value because we don't believe in it, the 38 point something, then put the mouse over the value. It's, it's important that you put it over the value because if you put it over the name and right click, you are getting different options. We, are, we want to do something with the value or the flag that is uh, sitting here. So mouse over the value or you put it over the flag and you right click and everybody should now see this edit dialog. Uh, in principle, uh, WebODV would allow you to edit the data, the sample data, but I'm not going into the details here. If you experience ODV users, it's just the same as in the desktop version. All that we want to do today is use the third option, assign quality flag. And as you can see, a submenu will go up and, and you will have several options. And we will go through these different options step by step. <clears throat> so the first one, is the one that operates just on the current sample, the one that has this red cross in the data window. Okay, so everybody clicks this option, current sample, and everyone should see the so-called assign quality flags uh, dialog. Anybody not seeing it? Again, it's just the same as in the desktop ODV. Um, it's telling us that you are supposed to select a new quality flag for, for salinity. So I was, I was right-clicking on the wrong thing. So I, I dismissed the dialog and I do it again. Mouse over the value that we want to change. Assign quality flag, current sample. Okay, so pay attention to what's listed here. So it's easy that you uh, have hit the, the wrong variable, right? So just for reconfirmation, look at it. Um, and click into this um, uh, list. And uh, you should now see all the uh, C data net quality flags that are available. And now it's your choice to choose one. So I, I would really say this is a bad value and I would choose bad. And click apply. Now, you should see the change. And I should say, this, this action is immediate. Just like in the desktop ODV. ODV will write it to the collection as soon as you click apply. And, and has consequences. So for instance, here in the display list, the color of the value will turn red, and the value here is the quality flag 4, indicating it's a bad value. But it's important to realize when, when you click OK, it's done immediately. All these changes are locked, and I'm, I'm now showing you how to see the, the lock records here in the web interface. And again, this is similar to how it's done in desktop ODV. Go with the mouse over the station ID um, title here. Right, right click. And you should now see yet another dialog. And what we want to do is now browse station history. So we, we are asking ODV, please show me all the, the history records that you have for this station here. 
And they are now shown in a dialogue. And, and you would see um, the last one here with a date of today, just now. Uh, Peter at Maris did it. So it's the user that has logged into the VRE that his name, his or her name is, is used here. And because I'm, I'm using what Peter has established, his name, what did he do? He edited the flags, what variable temperature, depths of 100 meter, and it was changed from zero that it was before to four. So in, in principle, by having a possibility to look at these log records, it would be possible to undo or to change to some other flag. And it's always possible to blame the person who did it. That's important. Peter. <laughs> so all I'm doing right now will be locked under his name. Um, okay, so uh, sometimes, like, like in this case here, um, I'm now switching to salinity. Um, we realize that an entire profile has bad salinities. And actually, if you, if you look at the values, um, they don't make much sense. So in 300 meters, we would have 27. If I go deeper, um, 26. Nobody would believe in these salinities. And actually, if you look at the, the highlighted curve in, in the data plot, none of these make sense. And this is an example where we would flag all the samples of the entire station, of the entire profile, right? This time, salinity. So how, how would we do it? Suggestions? So we want to change salinity, make sure the mouse is over the salinity value, not, not the temperature or the depth value, salinity value. That's crucial. So the start of these dialogues, pay attention. Right click, assign quality flag. So now you know the sub-dialogue with all these options. Current sample, the top one we did just uh, two minutes ago. Now we want to, to use the second one. All samples of the current station, right? So choose this one. All the remaining steps are just the same. You will have a dialogue that shows, um, well, that we are changing flags for salinity. Yes, now I want to change salinity. Um, Click into this list just to see your options. Um, well, to be honest, all of them are bad values, so I, I would choose bad values. And then never forget apply. If I now clicked uh, somewhere else, this dialogue would be dismissed. Nothing would change. So this is an opportunity. Sometimes you just want to escape from that dialogue then you move the mouse outside and click somewhere, nothing will change. But in this case, it, it would be um, making the changes. So it's important to click this apply button. And now actually, same thing, these samples have turned red and uh, have the flag four. And now, third option. <clears throat> Let's go back to this example of temperature again. Here we know all these temperatures. And actually, if you click on, on these different uh, points, you actually see they are coming from different stations. It's not just one station that has these bad behavior. But what if you wanted to flag all of them in one go? And this is what we are learning now. And again, now we want to flag temperature. So mouse over temperature value. Here, right click, assign quality flag, and choose this third option. <clears throat> All samples in, in window one, which, which is the top left window. And from now on, it's, it's kind of boring, and so I'm going quickly. And now it has flagged all of them. So 
you can click on any of these points now and, and you will see its um, red color. It has the four as quality flag. And if, you're, if you want to check whether uh, a lock record has been written, just practice, right click on station ID, browse station um, history, and, and here you would see that there is a record there. Um, <clears throat> the, the other two options here in this list we will not practice. They are potentially very dangerous because they are reflagging a large set of data points. So be careful with these ones. So the last one, for instance, it would say uh, all the samples in the collection. And, and this would wipe out anything that you have done before. So be careful with these. But sometimes it's useful, so I, I keep these options. Um, in, in subsequent versions of this interface, I, I will implement confirmation dialogues so that you can choose these and then you still have a chance to say, uh, oh no, <laughs> didn't want to. But right now it, it would do it and that would not be good. Um, I think this is basically all, yeah, let me finish that sentence. Um, all the methods that I, I want to show and in the remainder of this um, quality control session, and we basically have 30 minutes to go, um, I, I will leave you on your own to quality control either this dirty data set or one of the imported collections that you have done this morning. Using similar techniques. Ah, there's one important thing. I'm not forgetting your question. So why are we doing all this? So um, let me also show how you can filter the samples in this interface. Those of you who are using the desktop version know that you can have a, a, a sample filter for every window. And that is possible also here in the web interface. So first of all, I, I want to um, make full range for all these windows. Well, after zooming, at some point, you want to see everything again, right? You can do this individually by, by going into a certain window, like here, the oxygen. Right click and click full range. Then it will do full range on this window. If we want to have full range for all the windows, which I now want to have, we go to the canvas, the entire page right click and choose full range and now I'm seeing um, all the data now how do we filter so let me apply a sample filter to this temperature window where we know all these temperature values here in this right upper corner we have just flagged as bad data right and now, how can we get rid of them? Mouse over this window, right click. Down here in this window, there is an entry sample filter. It has a submenu. The first entry would be accept all this, all data, which would mean uh, like it is now irrespective of what flag they have, they will all be shown. Now, what we want to do is choosing the second one, reject outliers. That includes all the questionable and bad data will not be allowed. They will be filtered out. Once you have done it, then all these points that we have flagged, they are no longer visible. And that's that's kind of demonstrating why we do the flagging. Later on, when we do the scientific analysis, we want to not see these bad data. They are still in the collection. We can make them show again by just accepting all the data, right? That's the general principle. 
Um, somebody had a question. Uh, microphone or not? If you speak very loud, because it's... Okay, these, this... Uh, the question was whether the flagging can be undone, right? Uh, the short answer... Now all the remote people have... Uh, <laughs> short answer is no. This undo has to do with changes in this interface, in the layout thing. Um, the only way to undo uh, these changes is to do a um, flagging again and uh, choosing a different flag. Any other questions? Is there some way to highlight the flag? Uh, yes. I mean, uh, yes. So um, let's learn something, something new. Um, derived variables. Later, after the lunch break, we want to continue a little bit with uh, quality control using additional information like derived variables. So we need to cover this anyway. Um, so the experts of ODV, if I want to have a derived variable, what do I do? You realize I just want to keep you awake before the lunch. So the mouse has to be uh, over these, the, over the var variables list. You right click and then there's this option derived variables. It's available in the web interface as well. <clears throat> Just do it. Um, you will get here the list of choices and these are names of groups that you can open by by clicking on the title, so you can open and close uh, all of these groups. And later, after lunch, we want to go to the physical properties because I, I want to highlight that using density can help you in the quality control. And if you are a biogeochemist, do we have biogeochemic interested people? So it's like nutrients, you could use ratios of, for instance, nitrate uh, divided by phosphate as an additional indicator because the experts know what value we expect, right? But now somebody was asking about the um, quality flag value and I now have to try to find it myself. So under special, there is a quality flag value that you can request as a variable, which then you can plot. So let's do it once. Quality flag value. You choose the variable for which you want the flag value. So let's say temperature, because we did a lot of flagging for temperature. And apply. And now, here in the already defined list, you have quality flag value as a derived variable. Click Apply. And now, this new variable is listed at the bottom of the variable list. So later, when we uh, require more derived variables, they will all be added at the bottom. Um, so in this case, we have the quality flag value of temperature. And now I have to uh, say a few words of explanation. These are the ASCII codes of the flag itself. Remember in, in C DataNet, there's a flag A, for instance. So that it's, it's non-numeric. But, but this derived variable uh, needs to have numeric values so that we can plot them. So what it's doing, it takes the ASCII value. So in this case, uh, zero, the character zero has ASCII value 48. And in, in this window, I, I will bring back um, the temperature, the bad 
temperature. So I'm saying exact all data. So here they are. And we would learn a 4 has ASCII code 52 and so on. Now we could plot, uh, we could make a plot like here where right now we have salinity. I will put this quality flag value. Uh, desktop ODV specialists would do what? Mouse over the window, right click, X variable, and we would choose um, this quality flag derived variable, and we say apply, and, and we have these values. Let me zoom out a little bit. And actually, you would see um, the um, four values, the bad ones, as ASCII code 52 in, in this plot. So uh, the question was, can we make use of the quality flag values? Yes, we can. Any other question? Yes. <clears throat> or, because I might want to, let's say, keep values uh, good, probably good, and then filter out the bad, only the bad. Yeah, values, yeah. So I don't see on the screen. Yeah. So um, the desktop version allows complete freedom in, in doing these kind of things. Um, the web interface currently does not allow it. So it, it has a predefined list of what is considered bad. And, and they get filtered out. If there's really high demand, uh, in principle, that could be added to the uh, web interface, but presently, no. Um, this categorized version is much simpler to use, and it, it actually does what most people would want to use for scientific analysis. Any other question? So uh, we still have 20 minutes. So what I w would ask you to, to now do hands-on on your own, quality control, experiment with the interface, either continue using this dirty data set or open one of the collections that you have imported in the morning. And uh, I will walk around and, and see um, how it's going. If you have questions, you can always raise your hand and, and myself and maybe some other helpers will service you. Okay? Uh, there, <clears throat> there's one uh, thing that I want to re-emphasize. So um, w we realize that the present state of these services is far from being final, far, very far. Uh, and I would like to take the opportunity of having all you in the room here to, to receive feedback. So this morning, I already encourage you, please, if you have questions or suggestions or statements of what is not working, um, I, I want to strengthen that recommendation. Please do it. And if you like, just take a photo of that page of paper and email to me. Um, I, I really think it's helpful to have feedback in a quite early stage. And this, I, I want to invite you again. Okay. Okay, everybody, please, um, before we break for lunch, I, I want to make one additional point um, that is kind of, uh, well, I have to restart here. QC.
So in the process of quality controlling, um, I can set up the windows already having the filter active all the time. So here, this temperature window, I could switch on sample filter reject outliers. So the ones that I have flagged, of course, they will be thrown out. But now imagine I, I want to flag all these points here. For instance, the quickest way would be to make this quick zoom. Um, from the mouse over it, I know this is window one. I could now say uh, temperature values of all the samples in Windows 1 I, I want to flag. And I'm choosing bad value, apply. Now all these points are, are gone already. Why? Because this window has the filter active all the time. And this is maybe even more useful because the points that you already have excluded, they are no longer shown because if they are still shown that some people complained they are flagging twice because they are still visible. So it might be the best choice to, to have the uh, outlier rejection on all the time. Also, how can you determine quickly whether a filter is set or not? Put the mouse over the window and look in the in the status bar in this lower part. If it's showing Q, then a quality filter is active. So for instance, this one has the Q, so a filter is active. This one here, the salinity window doesn't have it, no Q. So that's a quick way of, of finding out whether a filter is set or not. And with these comments, um, uh, I would end the second session of the Web ODV, and we are breaking for lunch, and obviously we are going to a different room, <clears throat> and we will come back um, 1.30 for a final session of the uh, Web ODV services. Okay. Um, just one final, very final comment. Um, these web ODV services, <coughs> they have built in a timeout period. So I'm saying it because uh, we are now going for lunch. Presently, this timeout period is 60 minutes. So whenever you are leaving uh, your work open here and, and you uh, are inactive for more than 60 minutes, you are kicked out automatically. So let me now show you what is the recommended way to leave a session orderly. I, I should have done this before. Um, but now for lunch, uh, it's becoming um, essential. So the mouse over the canvas area, white area, right click. And then down here is the closed session. And now before you head for lunch, please everybody um, locks out. And later you will have to go in the same way as before.